I'm not gonna lie, I often wonder how a loser like me was able to get his life together. I had a lot of odds stacked against me when I was a kid. A single parent household, I dropped out of school at a young age, I did drugs, I was violent, I was arrested multiple times as a teenager, and I, I wasn't really a good kid. And then when I was in my 20s, I didn't do much. I kind of just partied a little bit, played a lot of video games, drank a lot and smoked a lot. Didn't really focus on anything. Kind of jotted down a few things that I did notice that really helped me over the years become the person that I am now and be you know, kind of successful. I, I recently just accepted a job that pays six figures. I have a good amount of money saved up. I have a great family. I have like perfect credit. It's weird because if you would have known me 10 years ago, or if you would have known me when I was a kid, you wouldn't think that I would be where I'm at now. I, I wouldn't have even thought it. I decided to make this video because I want to start talking about stuff that's not just specific to coding because I feel like I have a lot that I can offer people who might be in a particular spot in their life where they're trying to improve and they're trying to learn how to code and they're trying to make more money and they're just kind of trying to get out of the rut that they're in because I feel like a lot of people that watch my content keep telling me that they relate to me in a lot of those ways. So I want to share some other things that I have done that helped me get my life together and that helped me become the person that I am now. So I thought I'd make a video titled, How Did a Loser Like Myself Get His Life Together in His 30s? And I started jotting down some of the things that I realized that really stood out to me that helped me get to where I'm at. And I'll start with the first one. One of the first things that I've always had was a good work ethic. Even when I was a teenager and I was getting into a lot of trouble, for some reason, I, I've always like had a job. I started washing cars when I was real young in Miami. I worked at a car wash that was on 8th Street and I remember washing cars for $3 a car when I was like 14 years old or 13 years old. The hell with child labor laws, they don't play that in, in Miami. I remember washing cars on Saturdays for three bucks a car and I get to keep whatever money I made in tips. When I was 15, I, I had like my first real job and I, I was a bus boy. And then I worked a couple telemarketing jobs when I was like 16 and 17 years old all the while I was stealing cars and doing drugs and like all that bad stuff but I always put that hustle mentality and that work ethic towards my jobs and that really helped me out a lot I wish I would have focused more on like businesses and stuff like that but I always was able to just like keep a job and maintain a job even though I was a complete dirtbag outside of work. And that was still true when I got a little bit older when I was in my early 20s I think that one of the main reasons why I was able to do so well with jobs that I had in Vegas where I was always recommended by other people because I worked really hard. I busted my ass parking cars, I busted my ass waiting tables and busing tables and being a banquet porter and I, like even when I had the to clean toilets, I cleaned toilets really well. I, I, I always put a lot of energy towards my work. I always, always hustled. I was always a guy running back and forth. I was always a guy sweating at work because I was working hard, even though my jobs weren't hard labor. They were hustle jobs. They were jobs that you worked for tips. And because a lot of those jobs, I knew that if I worked a little harder and I put a little more energy and some extra effort and gave people a smile and was polite, I'd make some extra tip money. I hustled hard. That hustle and that work ethic has always been with me. And I really think that if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have been able to move to other jobs that paid me better because if I didn't work as hard as I did, a lot of the people that always referred me to jobs that paid better wouldn't have done that. Like I would have never got the job at the restaurant. I would have never got the job at the strip club that, that was good money. And I'm really happy that I've always kind of had that. If you are someone who doesn't like to work, I know that nowadays there's the whole anti-work and people don't wanna work anymore, but the truth is that you you gotta work hard and you, you don't have to work hard for the man. You, you know, you don't have to work hard at McDonald's, you know, find the stuff that makes you more money. And that's what I'm gonna move on to the next thing is, is I always looked for the next opportunity that brought me more money. Always, 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 always. Because the truth is, Money solves a lot of problems. And when you don't have money, those problems are very real. And people who may not have grown up in bad circumstances and people who don't understand that just don't get it. But if you grew up like how I grew up, you knew that having money made a difference. And I always moved on to the next thing that paid me more, the next job that paid $2 more an hour or the next job that I would make more money in tips. And I was never loyal to any jobs because 
I had to look out for myself and I had to make sure that I was able to make more money. And even if that meant like doing different lines of work, I would do it. And that's why, you know, I've, I've worked everything as far as hotels and restaurants go. I've bussed tables, I've waited tables, I've worked the back of the house, I've worked the front of the house, I parked cars, I did bellmen and you know, I did everything I could to make more money. And that's still true to this day. Even with my coding jobs, you know, I, I got my first job five years ago. I put in two years there. I started there at like 50,000 a year. And I, and I put in that work at that first job. And then I moved to the next job. And it wasn't just because of the bump in pay that I moved, but it, that was one of the big reasons. It was also kind of toxic at that, at that place. But that's a topic for another video. Knowing that after I had two years of experience as a developer, that the next job would pay me more. And then at my most recent job, it was kind of the same thing. I, I got another three years of experience or almost three years of experience and I was ready to make that next move to make more money. And the truth is, if your employer isn't gonna see the value that you bring, if you're in a line of work that doesn't pay you much, Go find the next thing that makes you more money. You know, there's a lot of things out there that can make you money beyond programming. There's all kinds of things that can make you money. You just have to go out and look for it and you have to be willing to work hard and have a good work ethic and show up every day and hustle. You gotta hustle. That's just how the world is. You gotta, you gotta put in the work. I don't care what anybody says. And if you don't wanna do it, then you reap what you sow. We live in a day and age where, where everything's convenient and people don't think that they have to work hard. And now that things are just so cushioned and, and easy for a lot of people, we feel like we don't wanna work and we want everything handed to us. But the truth is that that's just not how life is. And, and if you want something, you have to work for it. And if you want more money, then that's what you have to do. So make sure that you always look for that next opportunity to increase your pay. And make make more money because once you solve your money problems, then you can start solving other problems that you have. But if you're not making enough money and a lot of your problems come from not making money, then you need to figure out how to make more. Lifestyle creep is something that I've always tried to avoid. Um, that's another thing that, that has helped me get to where I'm at and helped me get my life together was that I tried to always like live beneath my means. And if I were to sacrifice money for something, it would be for something that would eventually bring me value. You don't want to always be making more money and then spending more money. You gotta try to make sure that you spend less than what you make and that will help you in the long run. And that's something that I've always kind of done. Although, you know, when I was really young and I was in my early twenties, I, I wasted all my money. And when I started getting closer to my thirties, I stopped spending so much money and I started investing my money or saving my money or paying off debt and avoid that lifestyle creep and make sure that you pay off your debt and make sure that you save money and make sure that you try to fix your credit. And those are all things that I did like towards my late twenties. I stopped spending so much money. I, I stopped allowing myself to buy stupid shit. And I made sure that if I was putting my money towards something, it was something that was going to bring me back value. All that extra money that I would spend on stupid stuff. And I would start paying off those credit cards that I owed a lot of money on. When I was like 24 years old, I had a 400 credit rating and now I have an 800 or 820 credit rating, which is insane. And I never thought I would have that good of credit. I remember going to try to buy a computer when I was like 22 years old uh, at at the electronic stores, I think it was Fry's or Best Buy or one of those places. I tried to apply for a credit card and they just denied me and, and they kind of told me what my credit score was and, and I was, you know, I had all kinds of stuff that was delinquent and I was just terrible. And now that's not the case. Now everybody wants to, you know, send me, send me credit cards and they want me to sign on the dotted line so they can give me a line of credit because my credit's so good. And one of the main reasons why I focused so hard on that was because I wanted to buy a house and I was able to buy a house with my wife. We weren't even married when we bought our first house. We bought it as a partnership. We were dating and that partnership is kind of like the next thing I'm going to talk about is one of the things that I know that really impacted my life for the better was I met a good partner. This was obviously my wife, so it was a romantic relationship, but this can also be incorporated for like a business relationship. If you're trying to do certain things, make sure that you get with someone who has the same goals as you, or if not, has skills or goals or ambitions that complement what you're trying to do and just find someone that you mesh well with, whether it be a romantic relationship or a business relationship, make sure that you find the right partner that can really help you in the long run. You know, if, if you, if you have a good partner, you can accomplish your goals a lot faster. And you know, I wouldn't have been able to buy a house on my own and I probably wouldn't have focused super hard on paying off all that stuff and getting my credit in line 
if my wife wasn't there because she kept me on the straight and narrow and we discussed doing these things and we discussed purchasing a home and we discussed like what we wanted to do with our future and we made that plan and we stuck with it together and if I wouldn't have had her as a partner I don't think I would have done those things I think I would have and I probably would have done them slower but having that partnership me and my wife combined had the income that was able to afford us our first home you know, there, there's a lot of reasons why you should partner up with somebody that's going to compliment you or make you better and make sure that you have a good partner. Because if I wouldn't have had a good partner, I probably wouldn't have been able to get to where I'm at as quickly as I did. So just keep those things in mind. Another thing that really helped me improve my life was I stopped doing things that wasted time. I stopped playing video games as much as I used to. I stopped watching TV shows and movies. I stopped hanging out with friends, good ones and bad ones, because I had so many things that I wanted to focus on that those relationships took a lot of my time and I wasn't able to focus on the things that I wanted to. Now that may not be the best thing to do because unfortunately, since I did that, I, I lost relationships that were good and healthy. On the flip side, I also got rid of a lot of relationships that weren't good and healthy. And I, I don't know, looking back now, I know that that helped me get to where I'm at now faster, but I don't know if maybe sacrificing some of those relationships that I, I cut were a good thing because there were some good friendships that I just lost. And there's some friendships that I still maintain, but anyone that knows me will tell you that I'm not good at like keeping in touch with people. I'm actually terrible about it. And I feel bad sometimes because I have some really good friends that I just don't communicate with enough because it's just my personality. And it's also something that I actively tried to do. I, I stopped wasting my time on people. And as terrible as that sounds, it, I had to do it because I needed to be selfish and I needed to be able to focus on myself. And I had so many things that I wanted to do that I realized that going out with friends was not good and it was a waste of time, it was a waste of money. Basically, if it didn't bring me value, I just wasn't gonna waste my time on it. And and I still, now to this day, like I'll play video games occasionally and I'll watch a TV show or movie occasionally, but I used to be a person that owned like 100 DVDs and I, and I owned every console game that came out. I owned every console that was out. I even played PC games. Like I was a huge gamer and like I barely touch that stuff now because there's so much more important things that I should be focusing on. Like my family, my wife, my kids, my, my life, all the things that I want to work on, like my YouTube channel or my side hustles and all those things that are just so much more important and bring me so much more value than things that waste my time that I'm really glad that that's something that I started to do. And if I wouldn't have got rid of all those things that were wasting my time, I don't think I would have got to where I'm at now. The last thing I want to mention is learn a skill that's going to make you money. Learn a skill that's going to bring you value. If you're going to focus on something that that's going to take up your time, make sure that it's a good ROI, make sure there's a good return of investment. Make sure that that if you do go out and say like, hey, I'm gonna learn this thing so I could so I can do this next thing, so then I can do this next thing, and it builds upon your character and it builds upon your life and it builds upon things that you really want to achieve and accomplish, learn those things. And honestly, I would say learn skills that make you money. For me, it was learning how to code. I learned how to code because I knew that it would bring me back a lot of value. I knew that it was gonna be good for me to invest my time learning that stuff because it can get me a good job. It was a skill that was in high demand, still in high demand. It was something that I could make a lot of money doing and it opened up options for remote work. It opened up options for freelancing. It opened up options for starting my own business or starting a startup and building my own app or whatever it is, you know, building web websites and all these things that I'm kind of doing a little bit of besides the fact that I'm a programmer professionally and I do that as my job for a living. I, I just have all these other options because of one skill that I set out to learn. If you look hard enough, there's plenty of stuff out there that you can learn that will be a good investment for your future and that can bring you money and, and open up new opportunities for you. So make sure that you invest time in learning a skill that's going to bring you back value. One thing now that I'm learning is that I have to have patience because all of this stuff happened over the course of like 10 years, probably more than 10 years at this point. I'm 37 years old now. I have great credit, I have a really high income, I have savings, I have liquid assets, I have investments. I have all this stuff now that I would have never thought of having, but the truth is it took 
10 years plus to get to where I'm at now. And having that patience to realize that I have to think long term and that you know, it's not gonna happen overnight, especially if you're not born with a silver spoon and you gotta like work hard, you're gonna have to eat shit and you're gonna have to like put up with a lot of stuff and you're gonna have to hustle and you're gonna have to work and you're gonna have to like put your head down and not care about what anybody tells you and just go out and get what you wanna get. Don't be so focused on the short term, be patient because with time, if you keep just working towards those things that you wanna work on that are gonna bring you back value, you know, get rid of those bad relationships, make sure that you fix your money, make sure that you make more money, make sure that you do a lot of the things that maybe I talked about here, or maybe things that you know that will help you and improve your life. Everybody knows when they're doing something that's good for them and when they're doing something that's bad for them. So focus on those things that are good. Focus on trying to improve and focus on getting better every day. One day you're going to turn around five years later, 10 years later, and you're going to be like, damn, I'm so glad I started doing all those things because that's how it is for me now. If I look back a year ago, the things that I've done haven't been that drastic. But if I look back 10 years and I think about all the stuff that I've done, I see all the things that helped me. And just, just think of it that way, you know? Just as long as you're focusing on the right things and you're working towards them, you'll get to where you wanna be. It takes a while sometimes, that's all. With all that said, here's one of my new motivational videos. I hope that it helps someone out there. I hope that it brings someone value. I'm kinda bored of talking about coding all the time and I figured that if I can talk about other things that I've worked on in my life that have helped me and brought me value and share it with some people out there, if it helps them and brings them value, then that's the whole point of this whole YouTube thing. And it's not just to try to, you know, get to 100,000 subscribers and have viral videos on, you know, talking about programming and shit. All right. With all that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button and I'll see you next time.